In this section, we'll be looking at implementing essential machine learning algorithms. In this video, we'll be focusing on using unsupervised learning. What is unsupervised learning? Unsupervised learning is a form of machine learning where the data is unlabeled, which means we have x, which is the independent variables, but we don't have any output corresponding to it, curry y. The goal of unsupervised learning is mostly to identify the underlying structure in the data or the distribution in order to learn more about the data. Insights from the data can be used further for clustering, this is identify groups within the data, or association. This means if someone likes M, there is a high possibility they like N2. How do you get to know about this if those people fall in the same cluster? The first example of unsupervised learning in machine learning is k-means clustering. The theory behind k-means is points in the different clusters are dissimilar, while points in the same cluster are similar. This means in k-means clustering, we are going to form clusters or groups of data of number k. k can be any digit from 1 to 10. If we have two clusters, it means that the data that fall in one cluster is very dissimilar from the data in the other cluster, but all the data sets in one cluster are very similar to each other. K-means clustering is popularly used for clustering problem, and it helps to find groups that have not been strictly defined in the data set. The second example of unsupervised learning is hierarchical clustering. This means that our clusters are built in a hierarchical manner. A cluster on below another cluster, below another cluster. And what is the logic behind the hierarchical clustering? To begin with, one creates clusters which are equal to the number of the data points. In the second step, one merges the very closest data points to form one cluster, which means we will just have n minus 1 clusters. In the third step, you compute the distance between the new cluster and each of the old clusters, and you keep repeating, you keep on merging, which means you keep on repeating the second step and the third step until all items are clustered in one cluster. This means the first one you have all of them, the second one you have n minus 1, the other one you'll have n minus 2, and that's how you'll get hierarchical clustering. In this section, we'll be looking at Java implementation of k-means clustering. Let's look at it. To implement k-means clustering, we will be using the Smile library. We installed the dependencies from the previous section. So just check. You need to have all the dependencies of Smile. And if you don't have them right now in your pom.xml, you can get it in the GitHub. I'll link it at the end of this section. Second is now the implementation of k-means clustering. The first thing we always do is loading the data. We'll be using the customer's data set. This data set shows the items that customers have been buying, fresh items, frozen items, grocery. And depending on the amount each customer spends on those items, we can be able to cluster them to different groups. We'll be loading the data. After loading the data, we are dropping the missing rows in the data. We want to remove the none. We have gone through this through cleaning data in the previous section. The next thing is exploring the data set. We want to see the last five items in this data set. When we run it, this is how our data set looks. And in the next step, we'll be removing the channel and the region so that we can remain 
on the items that we are going to cluster our customers based on. We are removing the very first two columns. So we call our table and we remove the columns, the channel and the region. And then we want to see how does the table look like after we remove the first five. Run our code. So we have removed the very first two columns. This is how our data looks like. The next step should be calculating the average, the median, the mean, and the max so that we can familiarize ourselves with the data. Which item do customers like most? Which items do customers hate? We'll be using the mean, the median, and the max. We looked at this in the last section, and whatever we just is, the column that we need to summarize, and we call the mean, and once we learn this data, we can be able to understand what happens. From the data set, we can see that a lot of customers spend a lot of money on fresh items, and they spend very little money on frozen items. Also, looking at the, the median, the fresh has the highest median, whereas the frozen has the lowest median, which means a lot of people prefer fresh items other than the frozen items. And that's basic what our data is telling us. You can dig deeper to understand what was the minimum. It was $3 on grocery, and there was also $3 in the fresh. As much as a lot of people love buying fresh, we can see the, the distribution of the fresh that even people buy smaller quantities and bigger quantities. The next step is looking at how our data is going to be split which we are going to do the 70-30 rule. We get our training data set and our testing data set. We have a table which will hold the training and another one for testing. We call our table and we select from the first data row to the 350 row. That will be our training. And from 351 to 440 will be our testing set. And since the K means function the k means class in the smile library only accept double of a multi-dimensional array of type double we are going to convert our tables to multi-dimensional arrays so we have our table train and we call dot us dot double matrix this converts it to a double dimensional array the same thing we do to our test array in the next step, we will be fitting our model. We have our train set and test. So we'll be fitting our train set to K means model so that we can train the model. In fitting the K means model, we have our training array. So the function accepts the data, which is our training array of multidimensional it accepts the k this is the number of the clusters that you want to classify the data into and it also accepts the maximum number of iteration that you want it to run for and the last one the 20 starts for the number of runs of k means algorithm this is the maximum number of iteration and this is the number of runs of the k-means algorithm in this data set. So, in our scenario, we have the data. We have chosen our clusters to be 3, but to start with, we can make it 7. Our number maximum iterations is 100, and the k-means algorithm will run 20 times. Through this, we can be able to see the output of how our customers will be classified. As we can see, we have quite a distribution where we have two customers, which is 0.6%. We also have a 1.4%. This means that 
they are not well distributed, which means we need to revise the number of clusters. These are just outliers. So we can narrow down our clusters uh, to five and run our function again. And now we can see that there is still an outlier, which is five people, but there is quite diverse classification. But is five really the optimum? Let's see what three does. You don't want small clusters with one person, one person, one person. So I believe three is our optimal number of clusters depending on our data set. There is even distribution of people, although the majority falls in the first cluster. And then you have the 12 and the 12% in the other two clusters. So this is how you create a k-means model and you fit it to the model. In the next step, we will be looking at how do we test the model on a new data set. So testing the k-means model that we have created here. So we're going to give it a new customer who buys fresh milk frozen of 20,000 per time, which means this looks like a very high ed customer. We run it and see which cluster does the new customer fall. From our data set, the new customer falls in cluster one, which means that the 42, 12% they are on the higher spending edge. We can change the data. We have modified our data and let's see where the customer falls. This customer barely spends a lot of money. So he's just a, a normal customer just spending enough. So let's learn and see where the customer falls. Now the customer falls in cluster two, which are the majority. From the two classification, you can be able to know that the majority of the people spend not that much money, whereas the least who fall in this category of 12.3, they spend extremely high amount of money. And that's how you feed k-means to a data and you get the clusters.